Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story covers some critical zero-day iOS vulnerabilities that attackers are exploiting in the wild. Let me start with the short version of the video. Basically, some researchers have identified targeted attackers exploiting three new very serious iOS operating system vulnerabilities that can allow an attacker to totally uh, take over your iPhone and load anything he wants on it simply if he can get you to visit a malicious website. Apple responded to these vulnerabilities very quickly and they released iOS version 9.3.5 which fixes these vulnerabilities. So the short version is if you're an iOS user you want to go get that update because they fix some pretty critical issues. The longer version of this story is quite interesting and I think it also highlights some of the issues with nation state and cyber warfare type of attacks. In any case the story actually comes from an organization called the Citizens Labs as well as uh, some additional research from a mobile security company company called Lookout. Here's how the story started. Basically, a kind of well-known human rights advocate from the United Arab Emirates received a text message with a link in it. Now, this is a particular person that has been targeted by uh, hackers in the past, presumably nation states that are kind of against his particular political agenda. So anyways, he knew that this text message looked suspicious and he shared it with the Citizens Lab, an organization that kind of looks at how uh, the cyber landscape affects politics and things like that. In any case, the Citizens Lab started some research into this obviously malicious link. They visited with a almost up-to-date iPhone, as the particular victim had, and when they did, they noticed that Safari disappeared, and eventually the phone ended up getting malware. And working with Lookout Labs, they did some research in what happened. And long story short, they found that this particular link leveraged three different vulnerabilities in iOS. It first exploited a zero-day WebKit vulnerability to execute this drive-by download, essentially a memory corruption flaw that allows an attacker to send shellcode to the device. However, it also had to exploit a vulnerability to bypass an iOS operating system security mechanism. And this is something called the address space layout randomization uh, mechanism. A lot of operating systems have this, and without getting into technical detail, essentially these mechanisms make it a lot harder for bad guys to leverage memory corruption flaws to exploit code. So the attacker had to bypass the security mechanism in order for this attack to work. And finally, because the attacker only had Safari privileges based on the WebKit exploit, the attacker also had to leverage some elevation of privilege vulnerabilities to actually jailbreak the iPhone to allow them to load unsanctioned code and basically put malware on the iPhone. Now in this particular case, they also analyzed the payload and this essentially was malware that took over the phone. It allowed the attacker to grab all the contacts on the phone, to monitor all your text or SMS messages, to monitor your phone calls, to turn on your speaker silently and stealthily just to listen in to whatever you were doing and even to take pictures on your phone at any time. And based on the Citizens Labs research, it looks like this payload is actually software designed by a legitimate company that sells software to governments to do this sort of mobile device surveillance, to not only see all your text messages, check your phone calls, but to also monitor or things like WhatsApp and Viber and Telegram and other encrypted things that might happen on the client. And it's really all around allowing nation states to spy on uh, uh, targets for intelligence purposes. In any case, this is a very interesting, relevant, and sophisticated attack. And I think it brings up topics that we need to talk about as an industry globally. First of all, the fact that it uses three zero-day vulnerabilities is a big deal. You know, zero-day are very valuable. Attackers want to hold on to them as long as possible so security companies and vendors can't fix them so they can't use them. So whenever you have an attack that combines a lot of valuable zero day, that's a big deal. Also, on top of that, these were iOS zero days. While security pundits like me have always talked about how Apple devices can be hacked too, they're not invulnerable, Apple security is pretty good. They put a lot of security mechanisms in their device to try to mitigate these attacks. 
So seeing these particular attackers combine these three zero day, which they've obviously guarded for very specific iOS operations is very, very interesting. Finally, this kind of illustrates that there's companies, supposedly legitimate companies out there that are creating attack tools. Sure, they say they're creating them for governments and nation states for security reasons, but they don't only sell them to democratic countries. They sell them to countries that may use them to go after citizens who are human rights activists. And they're hoarding zero days so that they can load their spyware software, which means the overall community is unprotected from these attacks. And in this particular case, the presumption is a nation state is targeting this particular human rights activist. Probably not a democratic nation state, probably a nation state that's okay with censoring citizens and limiting things like uh, free speech and things like that. So the idea that a democratic nation state like Israel has a company that's creating government nation state surveillance tools and selling them to any nation state for whatever purposes is kind of concerning to me. I believe governments companies should be protecting everyone from cyber attacks. So the idea that companies and nation states are building attack tools and perhaps even hiding vulnerabilities so that they can be used for their commercial software is very, very concerning concerning to me. I think it's a problem that needs to be addressed globally. In any case, this is a very big attack I'm sure we'll hear more about in the future. Again, the practical tip is simple. If you are an iOS user, go update as soon as possible. Finally, just one general practical tip. While patching iOS today will actually fix these three new zero-day vulnerabilities, do know zero-day vulnerabilities can always exist in software. So you always need to be very suspicious and careful what links you choose to interact with. With. If you get weird text messages, emails that seem slightly weird that have links, you may just want to avoid those links altogether because they could lead to a known vulnerability that maybe you have a security protection for, but they could also lead to some new zero day that hijacks your phone without you knowing. So always be suspicious of the links you click on. Anyways, just a very interesting story. Be sure to check out the Citizens Labs post on it. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.